I actually started this video some months back and I never did get around to posting it onto my YouTube channel. The reason was because I was hoping to find more information and I was hoping that maybe I might be able to find a link with some other cases. But I want to go on ahead and post this right now because I found another story involving a unidentified woman whose remains were found in the area around Knoxville Airport, Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, I made the video about Trini Gibson, who disappeared in the Great Smoky Mountains. I posted that back in March. And I meant to immediately follow that up with the story of Tracy Sue Walker. I never did get around to posting that story, and I want to go on ahead and do that now because it's going to segue into this next story about this Blount County Jane Doe whose remains were found in an area very close to the area where Tracy Walker was found. Now, Tracy Walker's remains went unidentified for about 20 years from the time they were discovered. The reason I'm connecting these is because at the time that um, Tracy Sue Walker's remains were found, the family of Trini Gibson was still searching for her. It was around seven years after she disappeared that Tracy Sue Walker's remains were found. So, of course, the family were hoping that maybe they were going to get some answers in the disappearance of Trini Gibson which, by the way, they still don't have any answers in her disappearance. But I'm going to go ahead and do this story on Tracy Sue Walker, and I hope that you will watch the next video after that will be the one about Blount County Jane Doe. I don't know that there's a connection other than the location, but it's possible that there could be a serial killer or could have been a serial killer in that area. I did a story a while back about a young girl who went missing in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in the 1970s. Her name was Trini Gibson and she still is an unsolved case to this day. About seven years after Trini Gibson went missing the remains of a young woman were found about an hour or so away near Knoxville, Tennessee. I started reading about a story a few days ago about a young um, girl, who's re a young woman, whose remains were also found in the Knoxville area. And I started to wonder if there might be a serial killer. Um... They believe this girl to be from the north. I'm going to do a story on her right immediately after this one. So I just wanted to kind of connect these stories. Not that I know for a fact that, it, that any of them are connected. But I wanted to connect them because of the possibility and the proximity. I personally... I personally, and along with a lot of other people in the story of the of Trini Gibson, I believe that this had more to do with her classmates at school on this field trip that she was on. I think something happened to her that day um, involving one of her classmates, and um, I'm very I'm very surprised that nobody ever came forward with any information on that. But I wanted to talk about this case today. This is the case of Tracy Sue Walker. The skeletal remains of a girl discovered in Tennessee more than 30 years ago have been positively identified as those of 15-year-old Indiana girl who went missing in the 1970s. This is what led me to wonder if the two cases of Trini Gibson and Tracy Sue Walker might be connected. 
if there is a possibility that Trina Gibson made it to the highway that day, maybe she caught a ride with somebody trying to get to a phone, and this person may have taken her. Her remains have never been found, so I'm not sure about that theory, but let's just say uh, this is why the during the time that Tracy Sue Walker's remains were found, Trina Gibson's family were still very actively searching for her, and when it was announced and they were told about these remains, they wondered if maybe this could have been their daughter. The unidentified body investigators called Baby Girl was matched to Tracy Sue Walker through DNA. Tracy Walker went missing in 1978 from Lafayette, Indiana. Her body was discovered around 400 miles away in Campbell County, Tennessee. How she ended up in Tennessee it still remains a mystery. Her body was found in the Big Wheel Gap area of Elk Valley on April the 3rd, 1985, around seven years after she disappeared. Forensic anthropologists were unable to identify the body but confirmed the remains belonged to those of a white female between the ages of 10 and 15. More than two decades after her remains were discovered, investigators su submitted a sample of the remains to the University of North Texas Center for Human Identification. University scientists developed a DNA profile that was entered into CODIS and the Combined DNA Index System, as well as the National Missing and the unidentified person system. Scientists at the Othram lab conducted forensic genealogy testing and found a possible relative of the child who shared a DNA link. Tennessee investigators identified potential family members in Lafayette, Indiana off of this information. They reached out to one individual who confirmed that he did have a family member who went missing in 1978. Together with the Lafayette Police, the investigators obtained DNA standards for possible siblings and submitted them into the database. The University of North Texas Center for Human Identification confirmed that baby girl was in fact Tracy Sue Walker. So now they're trying to find out what happened to her and how she ended up dead in Tennessee. I couldn't find a whole lot of information about Tracy Sue Walker's life prior to her disappearance. She was only 15 years old. So the case is back open. Walker's skeleton remains was found in 1985 in the Big Wheel Gap area of Elk Valley in Campbell County, Tennessee, which is just north of Knoxville. She was last seen at a mall in Indiana in 1978 with a friend. Her mother reported her missing twice and said that she had run away from home. So basically, while the family member's name has not been released, they entered her DNA into these databases and they got a match and it led them to Indiana where they reached out to this family member who matched and they let them know that they did have a family member who went missing in 1978 and they did DNA testing on their living relatives and it did lead them to um, identifying the remains, which was Tracy Sue Walker. Based on her address, Walker would have attended Harrison High School and she would have been a sophomore in the class of 1981. They're, they're 
gathering information just based on her age and the area where she lived. So it makes me wonder if her mother is deceased because she would have known this information. What we know about Tracy Sue Walker. She was born June the 2nd, 1963, and she died sometime in 1982 according to forensics. She was a teenager whose skeletal remains were found in 1985. Cause of death is unknown. They were only able to recover 32 of her bones. And 33 different girls were ruled out as matches to her. She identified in August of 2022. Tracy was last seen at the Tippecanoe Mall with a friend in Lafayette, Indiana in 1978. Her mother had twice reported her as having ran away from the Eisenhower Court home that they lived in. Tracy's remains were located in a garbage dumping area near an abandoned mine. Only a partial amount of remains were found as they had been scattered by animals down the slope of a hill. Investigators believe that the individual responsible for disposing of her was very familiar with this area. The road she was found near would have been very difficult to find just by driving around. So they're saying that whoever dumped her body out there knew of this area. Recent testing indicates the girl was born and raised in Florida or Central Texas for the first few years of her life, but later moved to a northern state, which was Indiana. She, it's not, she was, it's not believed that she was in Tennessee for an extended period of time, which leads me to believe that, and a lot of other people theorize that this could have been some truck driver Keep in mind, while they haven't mentioned that here, she was found near a haul road of a logging operation for a mine. Now, the, the road she was actually, her bones were actually located on was an abandoned um, shaft mine, but her, there was a nearby logging operation ongoing. So some people believe that this could have been a truck driver who was familiar with this area and maybe passing through the area took the opportunity to dump her body there. It has been theorized that she was a victim, a victim of the redhead murders. Although her cause of death couldn't be determined, it is suspected that she died by foul play. A pair of size 5 hiking boots with each having two pairs of holes and two metal hasps were found near her body. The boots had red cloth lining inside. A necklace was found that had been made from plastic buttons. The redhead murders are a series of unsolved homicides of red-haired young women and teenage girls who were left on highways after their deaths. It is unknown if they are all related or if it was if this involved more than one person. I'm going to look into this and see what information I can find. She may have been the victim. She may have ran away from home and been picked up hitchhiking or, you know, tried to make it, maybe she made it to some restaurant or truck stop or something and caught a ride with someone. There's so many. There's just so many. That's why it takes a while to find all these. You wouldn't believe the lists of people on here. It says her case has been solved. <clears throat> I think what they mean to say is that her identification has been solved. Her case is yet to be solved. 
they say that they have no cause of death, so they're not ruling this a homicide. They do believe that she did meet with foul play, and the area where her remains were found would not be an area that most people would wander into just to hide out. It, it would definitely not be a place you would expect to find a young teenage girl. So, in summary, in April of 1985, skeletal remains were found in the Big Wheel Gap area in Campbell County, Tennessee. Um, they determined the remains to be those of a white female around the age of 10 to 15. There's another story that I'm doing a video about that was simply uh, uh, called the Blount County Jane Doe was a young woman who was discovered in the same area near Knoxville, Tennessee. And I was doing a comparison, but the difference is is that there was around 20 years in difference from the time that the remains of Tracy Walker were discovered and this woman being discovered. That doesn't mean that there couldn't be a connection. Um, 20 years is a, is a long distance in time, but if, if it's a possibility that it could be a serial killer, it could be someone who passes through that area, it could be someone who deliberately uses that area as a dumping ground. I don't know if other remains have been found. I'm going to look into that a little bit more when I do the video on the Blount County Jane Doe. And um, like I said in the beginning of this, there's, there was no connection to Trini Gibson other than both of these were young girls, 15, 16 years old, who went missing. Um, Trini went missing on a, a high school field trip. A lot of people was pointing the finger at one particular student in her class, and he was pointing the finger at some other people in the in the town. But her remains were never found, and no evidence of a you know foul play other than the fact that. Um, some of her belongings, a ring, a, a necklace, a comb, were found in possession of some of the other students at the school. And they couldn't explain how they came up with these items that this girl had on her body, on her person, the day that she went on this field trip. So... That's what that's what leads me to believe that this was foul play involving her classmates that day. I don't think her case had anything to do with her being kidnapped or, you know. And so I'll wrap this up and just say that that was the only connection was the age of these two girls. And um, her family, when, when Tracy Sue Walker's remains were found... They probably were holding out hope that maybe it was their daughter so they could finally get some answers, but it wasn't. And it was um, many years, many, many years um, after Tracy Sue Walker's remains were found before she was identified. So um, the very few remaining family members of Trina Gibson, they were holding out hope as well. And... Um, Maybe one day they will get answers. Thanks for watching.